Should we start with the cheers? Well, yeah, sure, cheers. 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 Cheers, fellas. To us. Tuesday at 3 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> what, a, what a great time to start. Let's go, boys. Howdy, howdy, folks. Welcome back to Hoot and a Half. I'm your host, Matt King. Joined I'm with Mike Sheffer. Mike Sheffer. And today we are joined with the one and only Young Gravy, a.k.a. Young Gravity, Mr. Butter. Mr. Butter's worth. Um, what's the new one on Wikipedia? Clancy, Wikipedia. Clancy Brett. Oh, no. Somebody... <laughs> Yo, that's actually funny to that. First of all, I'm I'm also named Matt. Hello, I'm Young Gravy. Great name. Uh, thank you. I uh, likewise. I uh, <laughs> somebody just added that to Wikipedia casually, and I think it's like someone's big like internet hustle, like finesse. Like they did that. They added. Okay, so this is on Wikipedia under my like, all, AKA names. They have all these listed. One of them's Clancy Brett. And I just like I tried to look it up. There's no connection to anything. It's not a real name. It's not, <laughs> no one exist exists named Clancy Brett. And they added like some like high school in Australia that I went to. Just like some, I think someone just went in and just, just did that. Wikipedia vandalism and on just, your page. Yeah, but I thought it was kind of tight, so I just have left it for like three years. It's wild how anybody can just go on there and just start making shit up. But then at the same time, if you go in and try to add stuff for yourself, it like knows and is like, no. Yeah, they can tell when it's you doing it. Because you have to like get credits on Wikipedia to like be an editor on bigger yeah. and bigger articles. So someone, this must be someone's hustle to be like. There's, there's very few people that can edit mine. I know that because I've tried to find them before and it's like. I've had to like go through multiple people to like get there because like you can attempt to edit it, but like there's like only a certain amount of people like whatever my sort of article was like ranked or whatever. It's like you have to have a certain level. So of you can't Wikipedia. even edit your own Wikipedia. No, I mean I'm sure that, that there's some way I could like re- get someone to reach out maybe and do it, but like <laughs> yeah, I've tried before. And there's little things where I'll have to like call someone up to change it. I had a guy. This kid from Johns Hopkins, I don't know what he's doing now, but... This is great. I'm glad we're finally hanging out. We've been meaning to make this happen for a long time. And you're such a nice guy, man. Thank like, you. It's, it's really great. Do you know what the name Matt means? Uh, gift or something? Yeah, gift of God. Gift of God, yeah. That's how it yeah. is, man. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, my grandpa used to call me Matt Man. Matt Man. Matt oh, I've man. got Matt Man. Like, yeah. nah, 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 Matt Man. That's now hard. it's Matt the Rat he gets called. But yeah, like, I get that a lot. We're trying we're to squash that one. I know. We're trying... I, I need to stop. <laughs> okay, well... we'll, we'll Today was the last day of Matt the Rat. Oh, no, absolutely. And, uh, but and also another like name thing that we do have in common, and I know that you got a thing for the moms, right? You love the MILFs. You love all of that. But I think, though, like my mom would be off limits because both of our moms have the same name. Oh, did we figure that out, too? I think we may have talked about figured, that when okay. we were together, but I wanted to bring uh, it back up. I feel like I would remember that. Yeah, maybe <laughs> you looked it up or something. I don't know. That's crazy. The, your mom's name is Cynthia. Yeah. She go by Cindy? Both, but yeah, usually. Now, but, my question is, would you ever date a girl who had the same name as your mom? No. No, not no. at all? I've, t- I've, dude, I've totally like avoided it. I've had like I've had girls that like were, were cute and like were interested back in the day that I like thought about, but I, then I like when I was like, it's Cindy. I, I don't know. Can't. Oh, can't oh, bummer. Do it. I know that's it. I I don't think I ever could. Unless she went by Cynthia, I maybe could get behind it, but she could be like, I don't like Cindy at all. Because my mom doesn't go by Cynthia that my much. My mom does both, like both all the time. So that's two names that are basically off limits for you now. Yeah. Do you have much. any sisters that would be off limits too no, for names? No sisters. Okay. Well, I have a half sister named Heidi, but I've been with a Heidi before, so I already ruined that one. <laughs> I tried not. I, I tried not to think about it. Um, <laughs> and then my other, uh, actually, my other sister's name is Catherine, and I had two girlfriends named Catherine. So. Okay. Oh damn. So okay. just Cindy's but, off limits. But they were spelled. They were spelled differently, and I don't really know them that well. And you know, I, you know. One offs. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, no, okay, no, no. My sisters are not one offs. My sisters have been been no, around. half I sisters. <laughs> I don't, I don't know the sisters that well because they're half siblings and didn't live with me growing up. Oh, but, I see. Okay. But the I actually dated a girl for like two years with that name. Yeah. And it wasn't weird. It wasn't. What well, was spelled differently? Okay. I don't know. I didn't think about it at all, really. I don't yeah, really know. I guess yeah. when it's spelled differently, it like sits in your head a little yeah. differently. My brother's yeah. name is Sam, so I don't have any sisters, but my brother's name is Sam. And if I meet a girl and she tells me her name is Sam, I'm just like. Off the list. What Can't about your it. mom's name? Melissa. I've never really met another girl named Melissa, too. I feel like that's kind of a... It's not that common. Not but... as common. It's like something like Jennifer or like Laura yeah. or something. Well, she but... went by Missy. Well, I don't like that at all. A lot of girls with the name Melissa go by Missy. I, I know, like Missy. You like the name Missy? I like that. Yeah, it's cute. It's a very cute name. Yeah. I just knew a girl named Missy who was like crazy, and I think she kind of ruined that name for me back in college, but 
you know, Anything like Missy or Misty or Mitzi, all that stuff. It's oh, kind of cute. Yeah, you know? I think so too. Just like anime character names. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it was Misty who was on Pokemon, right? Yes, Misty was the. But her and Ash never hooked up, right? One of my probably her and Brock. I don't know. She was one of my crushes back in the day. I know that much. Oh, she was on that Brock cock for sure. <laughs> Brock cock, yeah. But then again, I think they were all like eleven and twelve years old. The, like Pokemon people? Yeah. No, I think he was like teenagers, right? I, he was trying to hit on Brock was always trying to get with the nurse, so I, I, I don't know. Oh yeah, he always flipped out when she was in the room. Yeah, I think yeah. they were. I think they were of age. I hope. <laughs> I don't know if I ever... we'll, we'll review the footage and cut yeah. it out. Of it. <laughs> yeah, if <laughs> if it's we're not, treading I mean... on. And uh, Gravy, you're from uh, Minnesota. The Minnesota. Great state. I love Minnesota. I've wanted to go to, but I've never been. I think, but I think everybody from Minnesota is like good people. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. Honestly, like not in a cocky way, but there's so many nice people from Minnesota, Wisconsin, like the Midwest, like especially that that part. Good people. What do you think it is? It's like, I don't know, man. It's just like it's just the culture. It's like you know, in New York, I don't know if there's something specific about New York that makes people kind of dicks, or like <laughs> Paris that makes people dicks. But like, it's just people. If you if everyone your whole life greets you with a high when you walk by, then you start doing it too. Damn, I know. I always uh, I did a lot of speech and debate in a high school, and the kids from Minnesota always rolled through, and they were just top tier. They had their shit down. Incredible speakers and performers. They were so well rehearsed. I always felt like it was just because of the weather there. Like around the winter, they just spend more time indoors and just focused on their craft. It's true, and it was before they were like drinking age. Because now that like when people get to drinking age in Minnesota, Wisconsin, it's like when it gets cold, you just drink because there's nothing else to do. Right. But back then, it was like, oh, let's study. There are there's like smart people in Minnesota for sure. Oh, I know absolutely. That it's got a really high like average. I don't know. Is the Mall of America overrated or underrated? Over. Oh, I don't know. I haven't. Really, I don't. I don't really go that much. You know, if you live in Minnesota, you don't really go to the Mall of America unless you need like. <laughs> get some specific ass thing but uh i don't know the rides are pretty it's pretty cool to have a indoor so if anyone doesn't know it's a giant mall in minnesota i don't know why they picked minnesota like the biggest mall in america and they have a giant like theme park inside with rides and everything it was camp snoopy at one point and then it was like cartoon land and then now it's like nickelodeon network or something. Is it, what's your like top ride though that I should check out if I ever go? There's a there's like okay, it's like it was called the big the mighty axe I think. It's like this big thing that spins around, and then you spin. It's lit. It's like, it was like you had to be a badass to go on it as a kid. I'll check it out. But you yeah. mentioned in an interview that like where some guy was like, "Oh, you're from Minnesota. Everyone there like I bet you've chopped down a tree." And you're like, "Nah, I haven't chopped down a tree, but you've gotten frostbite before. Where did yeah. you get frostbite at?" My face. Your face. Thought, yeah, I've gotten frostbite. Like when and where? Tell me. Well, like, how, how, how this happened? Just as a kid, we we'd always go fuck around in the snow, go sledding, go like you know, snowball fights are popping out there. But it gets really cold. Like it gets down to like negative thirty. We'd we'd have cold days more than we'd have snow days. Where like if it's under negative thirty, you you don't have to go to school. Shit, I didn't know that yeah. existed. Did y'all have that in Jersey? I've never heard that. No, in Jersey it's snow days, but co- they would call it a cold day. A cold day. Yeah. Do you like listen to the radio or? Get on the internet I, first thing in the morning. You get, yeah, you get. I mean, yeah, whatever it is, you get a you get a call or I don't even remember how that worked, but or on TV, I think. But uh, I don't know many states that probably would have that because I think it's got to be an, a federal thing of like negative thirty. Well, I guess if like in like in like a New Jersey, if it got down to negative like fifteen, people would be freaking out, right? Yeah, yeah that would be like the apocalypse. Yeah, it's, that's too cold. It doesn't really get down below zero, but negative thirty is like. Yeah, you could. You can't you like die in that? You can die. Yeah, like if you were just outside for long enough. Yeah. Jesus. And, and but that, your face looks fine. Like, how, how did you recover from the frostbite? You, you can get frostbite. That's not like crazy bad. Like, like oh. frostbite. There's like levels. The thing is, is that when you get it once, it's easier to get it again and again and again. Mm-hmm. So like every year, I would like start getting it like pretty quick, and I had to like like this is like when I was a kid, like between like you know ten and fifteen or something. So eventually, I just had to stop going outside in the winter. Like a little bit, or yeah. wear like masks and, and whatnot. Oh, hot damn! I was, that, a, I was a skier kid too, so like if you ski on a really cold day and then the wind's hitting you, it's pretty rough. Damn, a little better out here in sunny California, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, the weather's even in the summer. I mean, like when I was just in Minnesota a couple, like a week ago, it was like ninety something, super humid. Get back here, it's just chill. It's like seventy something. Well, I know you've talked about a lot about this, like the origin of Young Gravy, how it came from you uh, spending a lot of time when you were freestyling, working at a uh, a summer camp. Is that right? Yep. Um, and I guess like my question for you is like the freestyling with your friends. Was everybody in the group already freestyling, and then you were like hopping in as like a way to like survive and keep up with them, or did you just like the self expression of it? I think every every like I don't know 
Where are you from again? I'm from Texas. Yeah, Texas. suburbs of I Dallas. Guess, okay, okay. Maybe like it's a su- sort of suburb or small town thing, or I don't know. I feel like every, like, some. Were you a stoner kid growing up? Oh, no? yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think maybe sure. it's a stoner thing. Every, every, like, group of friends that were, like, high school goons that would, like, the fuck off group definitely had, like, a phase of freestyle. It's just too, it's just too common, man. And I, I, I don't know. I think, I don't know how it started, but, like, we all listened to rap music and we were just, like, like it would just be like my really good friends, either the kids I worked with at summer camp or some of the kids that I like lived with in, in or hung out with in, in Rochester where I'm from. But man, it was just like I don't know. Like it, it wasn't animosity. Like you pass it off, it was a good time. You'd like switch back and forth, like help each other out, get really hyped up. They're, they're <laughs> in Minnesota, they're all being nice to each other. Yeah, I, guess, yeah. <laughs> I know. I wanted to think it was just them going at it. Um what uh instrumentals were like your favorite to like rap over? Did you guys have a favorite or were oh. you switching it up like as much as you could we'd usually do like some like happy like vibey shit like i had all these like beats i'd found deep on the internet it's like kind of a start of like when i was getting into music and getting just getting interested i have like crazy like kind of like my beats now i could be sampling like some like cheerful shit or like, like we, we always wrapped on past the duchy by by uh young money that oh was, yeah <laughs> that's a go-to uh-huh. uh there's you know there's, there's just a or we just rap on like the randomest shit like some old funk music and make it work oh yeah mm-hmm. I, damn i wish we did that we were just rapping over like instrumentals from like the carter three a lot like a lot of like uh uh, six foot, seven foot. Lit. Also, ransom uh, with Lil Wayne and Drake. But that that beat, oh, I loved it. And then, uh, but did you ever like at one point start like a rap group with your friends, like jokingly at all, or did you immediately like, once you hit it, you're like, all right, I'm gonna try committing to this like solo. Yeah, it was kind of like like that's a good question. I, I I never actually been asked that. Uh, there was one homie of mine that I worked with who was really good at rapping. Uh, his name's Chase, and uh, we went by Gravy and, and Heavy Creamer. You know, that was, <laughs> Heavy yeah, Creamer yeah. was like his rap name, like at at summer camp. But it got to a point where like like all the counselors would like hang out on the weekends when the kids are gone and like party. Like, I don't want to give too many details, but like uh, sometimes they would just ma- like make us get up and freestyle for everybody because like it like just you know it was you a good could time. do it. It's entertaining. Yeah, yeah, and it was just for, like fun. So so me and him were like the two that were like the best or whatever. Uh, and I and at one point. I mean, this is probably like two or three years later when I finally started thinking about taking it seriously. When I was in college, I hadn't worked there for years. I was too old. Uh, I like hit him up at one point. And I was like, bro, I know like you're good at rapping. But he, he was busy with some other shit uh, at, at the college he went to. Uh, but but I, I never really thought about making a group or anything with anybody. I wanted to be solo. And like for the first like basically year that I was rapping, I didn't like tell anybody about it other than like my roommates that i lived with uh-huh I, like, a little secret even my good friends because i didn't want to be that guy that'd be like oh yo listen to my music check this out or be like you know have send it to someone and have it suck and have them like try to lie to me and say it's good or something yeah because so, yeah. you didn't show your face online for like a year and a half yep. right until after you uploaded your first stuff for like a year and a half uh, just about that was when i uploaded the mr clean video which was like a face reveal whole right. thing and didn't show my face for the first little bit and then everyone kind of did your parents know no, or no, you didn't no, tell no. anybody. No, 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 nobody. I mean, there was a like one one of my best friends, Vaughn, who I still who I ended up like bringing into the music industry, and we still are tight today. Uh, at one point, I think I ended up telling him. I, I sent him a link, and I was like, "Yo, like, check this out. Like, I found this rapper. It's wild." And he like listened to it. Like, like I acted like it wasn't me, but like he ended up figuring it out, figuring it out, and. How, no, how, wait, how fast? Like, oh, you just sent him the link. I sent him it, a link to some young gravy, but it, there was no pictures he or was anything. Making it like he found this cool yeah. underground I rapper. Had a, I had a buddy of mine in college who was like, yeah, I would say, like, he was like a bit of like a hobby rapper. He would like, uh, had made a couple beats, but at parties he would play it. And I'd be like, what do you think of this guy? And I remember the one time he was playing it. I was like, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. He needs to work on making it a little bit tighter. And some of the lyric choices are off. He's like, dude, it's me. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm so sorry. We'll be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor, Talkspace. When it comes to therapy and psychiatry, getting the help you need has never been so simple. When you're able to access your provider from the comfort of your device, it means therapy can be on your schedule. And alleviating the wait times to get an appointment or the travel time to an office can free up time for the rest of your life. Talkspace is so convenient and accessible, it helps me feel supported around the clock. 
Talkspace lets you send and receive unlimited messages with your dedicated therapist on the Talkspace platform 24 seven. With Talkspace, you set goals with your therapist and they hold you accountable to make sure you're really progressing. Therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times and be a guiding light. We fully encourage therapy. It's a great way to talk through some things you're thinking about, maybe even some things you're not thinking about. Therapy is something we highly recommend for everybody. So please, if you're, if you're in need, check out Talkspace. And one thing I love about Talkspace is how affordable it is. Talkspace is a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. Instead of waiting for an appointment, you can send unlimited messages to your therapist 24-7, and they'll engage with you daily, five days a week. Talkspace is also secure and private, using the latest end-to-end bank-grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first First month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code HH to get $100 off your first month and show your support of the show. That's HH at Talkspace.com. And now, back to the episode. Did you ever hit the mic at all when you were younger? I used to freestyle in you, college. You can freestyle pretty wicked. And like, I, it's been a while since I did it, but I, you know, it's like growing up. You're right. Everyone has that like freestyle... My t- everyone where- has like their like little trick that they do where like mine is I would always think of something like clever about the person that I was rapping in front of, but come up with like a little placeholder for the first line. That's how you got to do it. Yeah. You, you yeah. got to be three steps ahead of the punchline. Do you still freestyle or, or have you sort of given up that? It's weird. Part of you? I, I, I try not. I mean, I don't, I don't try not to. I'll, I'll freestyle for like, like when I'm writing music. But honestly, I think like if I was just had to go on the spot and freestyle something off the dome, like. I honestly think I'm probably less good now at that. Yeah, it's like a I'm, skill. My whole like sort of like writing process is mad different. I'm like focused on writing music, and it's like it's way different. So I like I don't know. I think I would I would either start getting into like rhymes that I've put into actual songs, and then like be afraid to to like start using the same rhymes and like. Right. It's, like, a, it's a different skill set to learn how to freestyle and like to keep that muscle sharp. You got to be doing it constantly. Yeah, because you know you do, you're really big about the rhymes in between like the lyrics. It's not you're not doing that a a b b like no. Matt, quick Matt likes to freestyle like your standard. Like, like yo not, man, not to, I'm here to make you laugh. We're on a podcast called Hoot and a Half. Like, that's that. what I call the Doctor Seuss rhyme scheme. Always <laughs> yeah. like, just like very clean. But then there's like internal rhymes you can get and like. Things where you put like A, B, B, A, and kind of, you know. Because I'll do, when I'm actually writing music, I like to go really crazy with it. Not everyone yeah. notices because like a lot of my fans aren't just like super, you know, like tapped in with all the different sort of facets of rap. But I'll do like, sometimes I'll go for like seven syllable rhymes where like everything rhymes like a full long ass word and another long ass word. And like do yeah. all these little, I don't know. I just, I've always been into like sort of that lyrical stuff, but like I don't want to be on the like, you know, crazy. NF style, like lyrical, yeah. spherical shit. So, like, <laughs> like just... the Aesop rock and like, <laughs> like the yeah. pop underground. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cause that's like, it's at that point, it's not even as fun to listen to, in my opinion. But, but, uh, I'll definitely throw in like every bar has sort of some sort of meaning that like you know it's more than just me saying. Yeah, you want it to be easy enough to listen to, but not complicated enough that you need to fucking whip out a thesaurus and a dictionary yeah. to like understand what the guy's talking about. Do yeah. you know all of your old stuff like at the top of your head? Like, do you have like old rom- like rhymes that you've known that like used to like spit when you were like in college or in high school and all of that? I don't know, man. No. I'm not asking you to say it, no. but like no, sometimes just, you're can't. just like, it's a little nostalgic one. You'll mutter to yourself one day. You're like, oh, I can't think of gravy. I probably ended up putting them into songs and then just forgetting about them or something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now that I've written, I've probably written like, I'm, I got to be getting close to a hundred songs like that I've fin- like recorded and put out. And man, I'm, I'm, I guarantee you probably like, I feel like people are surprised by this a lot, but I think it's true for all artists. I bet you, more than half my catalog. If if I if someone threw it on, and I had to perform it right now. I couldn't. I couldn't tell what the words are. You think you're at fifty percent of the full catalog? Probably fifty percent. Locked in. Yeah. I mean, you could rehearse it and relearn. Yeah, it, but... I could relearn, and I do before every tour. Every before every tour, I'll relearn some songs. I mean, there's like there's a solid twenty something that I'll never forget because I hear them all the time or I perform them so many times. But like, yeah, I mean, especially like if it would, it would be like the second verse or something like that, where like you don't always perform the second verse. So like, 
do the songs where I hear it and I'm like, damn, I snap. Like, yeah, I was going to say, have you ever like reread some of your lyrics and like, damn, I'm fucking good. Like, yeah. you're just like stoked on your own shit. All the time, bro. Do you ever go on Rap Genius and you read like what other people are saying the meaning of your lyrics are and you're like, I didn't even mean that, but sure, if they want to think that that's what it was. Bro, I, I love it because there'll be like scholars in there that'll go deep and they'll find like references to like, dude, like the craziest little things. Like one example I remember really clearly where my friend used to drive a Hyundai Veloster, right? That it, like it was his mom's Hyundai. This is when we were like, we just have this inside joke where we call this this car the Velociraptor, and then I put a bar in a song, which which is now gone because I got sued for it. I could I could explain that later, but um, I had a bar where I said I pull up in the white Velociraptor, and someone went on there and literally was like commenting like. I believe he's referring to the Hyundai Veloster that he's been seen in on Instagram stories with his friend. And it was like, whoa, it was the most like, like inside joke bar drop that I'd ever put out there. Like just to like show love to my friend. And then someone was like, yeah, I've seen like the three door car in his, in his post before. I've like, you could tell from the interior. I was like, man, this is a super fan. Can people investigate, man. That's some true investigative journalism. Were you ever a fan of anybody to that degree? Like, no, nah, <laughs> no. Nah. That's that's the thing. Is like I've thought about myself as being like a huge like fan of multiple artists. Like I think at one point Ashton Bronson and Young Thug at one point, and like thinking about like oh like one time I like DM'd Action Bronson trying to like show love, and then I'll look at like fucking like how many DMs I get in an hour. I'm like damn people. I mean I'm sure it's the culture's kind of changed a lot where people want to like you know social media is so much more prevalent now, but like. Yeah, I've never been nearly that big of a fan of anybody. You were never on message boards for like a band or a rapper, or like no. created fan accounts and posting yeah, edits and stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I ever would have gone to a meet and greet or anything. I, I guess like maybe I wasn't a big enough fan of some artists. I don't know, man. Yeah, I was a uh, I was a bit like on the Kid Cudi like fan forums a lot. I would on really, the forums. Yeah, I, I didn't participate, but I was actively following it, and I followed like a lot of email chains to see like what he was up to and um, anything that he was touching. But uh, but like meet and greets. I mean, this dude. I went to like uh, the nice kick store over in uh, West Campus. I, I went to meet Macklemore. Really? <laughs> Damn. I know a big cringe, but I really liked Macklemore during that time, and it was before. Um, oh, what was his big album? Like the Shop? the heist. Yeah. Was it that Thrift album? Shop. Thrift Shop was the was the the that song, was the song that yeah. did everything. Dude, I kind of wish I would have been a bigger fan of artists because like seeing some of the meet and greets I do, like bro, I like tear up sometimes. There's some really wholesome moments. Like some fans are like so hardcore. Like I'd say almost like I don't know, probably like once per meet and greet, I do a hundred every show. At least once a meet and greet, there'll be someone who like is like, "Yo, can you sign this so I can get it tattooed?" I saw on the uh, uh, the Young Gravy Reddit uh, page, you signed an inhaler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I've signed so many random things, but it's just like people think of anything to like to get signed, bro. I've signed like a birth certificate, a a, a, Quran, a Quran, man. I signed like. Uh, man, some weird, some weird things. Dude. <laughs> Shit. I mean, baby. yeah, when you when you make music, you can like for some people, it literally saves their lives. Like they they can't get through life, and they just hear something that just connects with them, and that's then they meet you in person, and it's like yeah, it's almost overwhelming. Dude, it's, it it is, but it's awesome. Like those are like some of my favorite moments. It's like my favorite part about touring. So what is a Young Gravy tour like from the perspective of Young Gravy? Like, how do you like to tour? Who do you like to bring? Are you drinking post show? Are you like very zen about it? Do you have post show? Like, what's your whole ritual of touring? Well, I like this question too. Is uh, it's a lot that goes into it, man. It's um, got a main main crew. I got my my uh, tour manager, who's uh, Puya's older brother. If you guys know Puya, the rapper, mm -hmm. his name's Andrew. He's great. Been working for a few years. Tip's my DJ. We, they started around the same time, and we we've, we've done hundreds of shows together. Um, uh, had a few different camera guys, um, but I almost always will have a camera guy with me. You're Correct. always recording your shows. Yeah, always, always got someone recording the shows and like the the behind the scenes stuff. Um, right now it's this kid Kale, Kale Brown. He's like a dancer on TikTok, but I'm, I I met him and he's just like he's good. So shout out to him and our sound guy Malik. Usually it's a crew of like four or five, but uh, that's if we're if we're doing college shows or like traveling, flying. Like when we're in Europe, that's what it was. But if we're like on like a, a U.S. tour where we can have a tour bus. It's a little bit bigger production because we can bring like a video wall and stuff. So when I toured with Dylan Francis recently, man, it was like his tour bus had 12 people on it. Mine had seven. And then we had a, 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 a semi with like all the production in it. So it was like a big thing. And that and it was great, man. Like I love all, all those different types of touring. Um, do you have a pre-show ritual or a post-show ritual? I, I do. I do. I um, 
post show, like it, it it depends. I don't usually drink after the show because I usually do drink at least a little bit before the show, and and I mean I don't know, it depends on who's there. What are like, we drinking? Usually, so I, on the rider, it's usually for the longest time for years. The the bottle I would ask for was was Bombay Sapphire, <laughs> and nobody really liked it. And I like I I felt bad because I was in this phase where I was. Just, into that shit. It's I don't a know. classy gin. It's it's a decent, but no no one really likes gin. So how, then, how did you drink it? I just pulls, straight out of the bottle. Pulls, yeah. I'm I'm just a, I don't I, I don't know. I'm a pull pull and chase guy, and we okay. you know we'd have like you know sugar like Celsius usually some type of sugar free uh, energy drink in there. We'd always have like a bunch of water. Uh, I get a bathrobe on there for like you know for yeah. part as part of the show. Yeah, a lot of little things, but uh, I switched to whiskey more recently. Johnny Walker Black Label is kind of Ooh, the go-to. Put mm-hmm. some hair in your chest. Yeah, and, yeah, and that and that uh, a lot of the, the more people will get down with that. But uh, but yeah, man, pre pre show, usually I mean there's there's we'll do meet and greet about an hour before doors. So like after let's say like five p.m. Usually the whole rest of the day is kind of like set with the show. Like you're doing the show. You you arrive in town on the tour bus. I'll, I'll go I'll go through like an American show walk day. us through the day walk yeah. us through the day so so you sleep you sleep on the tour bus with all your boys i have my own little room in the back which is kind of nice and and I, I need it because the bunks are too short for me so i have a little room in the back with a queen you're, bed you're what five nine five ten five. <laughs> so I'm, uh, i think i think they'd fix uh, they'd fit someone who's like six five in them and then but i'm a little bit above that so so uh i got my own spot in the back and i got clo- all my clothes and everything it's like a little little room and then um, usually you arrive in, in town, whatever the next city is, like between like 10 and 12, uh, the, the crew will go in and start setting everything up, like the video wall and all the audio and everything. And like me and like the kind of performers get to chill for a while. Usually we'll go like try to find the best restaurant in town or like link up with whoever it is. Because I've toured, I've toured a lot now, and so I usually have some pretty good friends in most towns. So Yeah, you've been to every city at this point multiple times. Mo- yeah, yeah, yeah. Most, all, all the big cities for sure. And like we did like a sea market tour recently where we're doing like Bozeman, Montana, Spokane, Washington. Oh, yeah. We were doing, what were we doing? We did Lubbock, Texas. It's, it's some smaller places down in, <laughs> yeah, the in your Texas hood. tech crowd. Yeah, down in your hood, some littler spots. And um, so yeah, hang out with, with whoever. You know, go get dinner and then uh, come like five or six, do a meet and greet, usually a hundred people. What I used to do, I kind of, I kind of changed up my style a little bit on on this, but there was a, a while where I was really. People ask me about this a lot because I told a story once in an interview, but I got really into DMT at one point, and I would do, I would do DMT, I would meditate and then hit DMT right before meet and greet. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Which was like. <laughs> It sounds crazy, but I actually, I feel like it's a kind of a nice way to come down into a meet and greet because yeah. you feel way more centered. Because I do get a little anxious whenever I do meet and greets because yeah. you are trying to be your most authentic version of yourself. You want every moment to be sincere for each person, exactly. But it's happening right after another, and you feel like I don't know. You're just yeah, being this cookie cutter. Person, yeah. moment of yourself but you want to be unique every time and i'm always trying to make it like longer but there's like with each person but there's like a specific amount of time so my tour manager will be like you know pushing that back on it or whatever but but yeah but but if you've done dmt like it it's it'll be you're kind of in like a slight little afterglow thing i think it was just because i wanted to get rid of the dmt and it became a tradition so i was doing it right then but meditating before it always helps because it gets you really relaxed uh maybe have like one drink or sometimes i just bring one to the table when i do my meet and greet that takes about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Um, and then, you know, you kind of just got, like, some time to chill. Well, like, my DJ does a different set every show based on, like, where we are. We'll do, we'll bring in, like, local, like, anthems and, and whatnot. Or oh, whatever. Very oh, smart. If it's a college, we'll play, like, their what their type of, you know, traditions. Um so yeah, there's some time to just chill, and then and then I'll drink a little more. I, I I'd say on average I'd do like three to five drinks before a show. I used to drink a lot more before shows, and I would like be fucking man. Like I, there's a lot of old old tour videos of me just like I don't know about videos that are out there, but just like there's a lot of shows where afterwards I'd be like, damn, I was probably a little bit embarrassed. Yeah, they're just like you like Elvis yeah. just dragging you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I I got over that, um, and I'm a big guy. So I mean, three to five drinks, I'm I'm still you know completely. In, in business mode, it's like a thimble of alcohol for normal sized people. <laughs> so I, uh, so so then yeah, man. Uh, I usually perform about an hour and a half. Uh, the set, 
I used to literally, my, so my first tour, I'm telling you, was way different. We had, I brought my homie as tour manager because we didn't know how to do it, and I didn't think you actually needed someone official to do it. Mm-hmm. I brought my my main producer as DJ, who, I mean, he figured it out, and he was great at it. And, and a good camera guy, but, like, we were all kind of winging it, didn't ask anyone for advice. So my first tour, we were all getting drunk, all, all four of us that are, like, working. Tw- yeah. yeah, all working and getting drunk. And the merch guy. And then, and then, uh, I ordered a ward. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then we would just like, I don't know, we break rules that we didn't know were there at the venue set. So after my first couple tours, they were like, when I got a new tour manager, he was like, man, I have access to Live Nation emails. These people don't fuck with you. Like, they always send warnings. They're like, oh, Young Gravy's going to pour milk on the crowd. Young Gravy's going to be, like, slurring his words. All this, like, like it wasn't always, like, a shit show. But it would be like, there'd at least be something that would piss them off or they just didn't end up wanting to tell me. Or we there didn't... were notes on the Young Gravy account for, yeah. the, for the tour bookers. Yeah, Ooh, and, and luckily I've, I've turned it completely around and, like... Um, Actually, last year I was the number one most booked artist at colleges. Damn. Uh, Damn. Yeah. yeah. At universities, that's like kind of my, my main hustle. Is, Who is was called? number two? I think Waka Flocka might have been number two. <laughs> probably probably yeah. Waka Flocka. That yeah. makes sense. And we did a few together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you Definitely. Go. College kids know what they want. Uh, so, so yeah, man. I uh, A couple drinks. But back to the, the, the night of the show. Uh I performed for about an hour and a half. The the set. Oh, here's what I what I was getting at. My set. I used to just wing it. We would just every song I perform it, and then I'd be like, "Yo, you know what I'm feeling? Play this. Play this." And that was like, yeah, you know, it didn't really always work out right. I'd forget like some like a hit sometimes, and people'd be pissed. I'd be like, damn. So so now we have like a general outline, and then there's like four or five that we sometimes switch up and like different little things we'll do. And then I have banter that's kind of like like in between songs that's kind of like. Streamlined a little bit, like a general gist of it. But you got your little stand-up set written out. Yeah. Al- almost, yeah. It's like it's like I have a general idea of what I'm going to say. Like I'll know what song's coming next, and like depending on where I'm at, kind of you know go. Have off. some jokes just not landed sometimes, and you're like, shit. I don't really. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, it's like I mean, if if I'm at like I'll do it way differently if I'm at like a festival or, or something where I don't they're not all fans. But if it's like my show, I kind of have a cult fan base, so like a lot of things that I say, they'll know exactly what I'm referring to, or they'll just love love me and be happy that I said anything, yeah, which is awesome. So, so at those shows, I just, you know, it's more fun to do my own shit cause I can just be myself completely and fuck around. Right. How did you first link up with Dylan Francis? Cause we've known Dylan for a while and a he's like time. the best dude, super nice, obviously incredible at what he does. What was that relationship? How did that start? I don't know exactly where I first met. It might have been through like Trevor Wallace or something. You guys know Trevor Wallace? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So him and I became good friends, and and I brought him out of my shows, and he's brought me out of his shows, and we just you know do some sketches and stuff. And uh, I think that he was just with Dylan one day before like he was doing something with Dylan, shooting something, and I was we, we, I just met Dylan briefly uh, through him, and we got along super well. I was like, man, this is dope. I've known of him since he he dropped that song like uh, I don't give a fuck or shit. Back oh, I D G A F A O S. I remember, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember finding that on like goodmusicallday.com. Same here. Yeah, same here. That? I think I found mine on Hype Machine, but like it okay, was right around of those, the time where com- those music blogs. Yeah, 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 one of those websites, man. Back in high school, and I was like, damn, dude, this guy's a legend. Like, this would be sick to work, and we got along really well. I realized we both do a lot of the same, like, sort of colleges overall, like similar fan base, and so we have like, we like. My manager and his manager are tight, so we just were like, yo, it's like, think about doing something, and then it worked out really well. I think I cried in front of Dylan Francis last time I was with him. Why? Yeah. Because he did this prank on me where he uh, gave me, you know, those like uh, pool triangles, like the oh, ones where yes. you put around uh, yes. the. Uh, I was there that day, yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> I. Uh, like the pool, the thing that you rack yeah. up the pools, the pool ball. Took right? me a second, but yeah. Yeah. So he knew of this trick. And never do this to a friend because <laughs> they may cry. Um, you're supposed to like put your hands in it and uh, uh, twirl it back around on the other side. Like you put your hands through the little pool rack. Okay. Like your hands are in the triangle, mm-hmm. and, it's, and you then try you and invert the triangle, like that. Yeah. But if you know how to do it, you know to do it really far away from your face. But most oh. people who do it do it right in front of it, and it went up and it whacked me on my nose so hard, like. It was, 
it, it hurt a lot. I'm just gonna cry again. But I also, I well, anytime you know, whenever you were like hit like with a basketball on the nose, if it's, it's in the it's, nose, you it's cry. An, it's an instant tear spot. Yeah, it does. So that. it was a combination of those tears, and then I was about to go uh, meet my girlfriend's like parents for the first time, and I was convinced I was going to have this huge bruised oh up God, he nose so, and teeth. I'm, this is the day I'm meeting my girlfriend's parents, and you did this, and he was so <laughs> upset. And it was just a combination of all of that stress, <laughs> and on top of my nose being uh uh it wasn't broken hit. it was okay it but was it was a like, hit and i just sat there crying until <laughs> francis i remember was like so concerned but he was holding back laughing and he's just like it's gonna be okay man <laughs> i'm like i don't know uh, oh man wow, i think sad. of francis i always think of that memory um wow. oh okay uh other questions i have because we've gone through already a lot and want to enjoy the time that we have here your new song betty it's doing so great congratulations Thank i mean you. you are just racking up so many uh views and listens and you are like the guy on tiktok now like your sound is like is it the number one sound on tiktok right i think now? so yeah you yeah. Are like a hundred million videos or something yeah maybe? it's just a stupid amount of videos it's crazy we'll be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor audible audible it's one of my favorite apps i would say that audible should be one of my most used apps but because i'm not on the screen and i'm using it all the time it doesn't show like the screen time but you're still using it but if there was a screen time on it Audible would be my top used app, if that makes sense. Maybe maybe not screen time, but listen time. Absolutely. I'm always listening to Audible. I love audiobooks. And we love that Audible is a proud sponsor of the Hoot and a Half podcast. So if you're like us, you may have a busy schedule. You're always on the go. And you don't have time to do the things you really enjoy, like reading. And that's why we love Audible. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and more. You'll discover exclusive Audible originals from top celebrities, renowned experts, and exciting new voices in audio. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. All Audible members get access to a growing selection of audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts that are included with the membership. You can listen to all you want and get more added every month and we're always using the audible app whether we're on a flight working out at home just making breakfast you can play it on your phone computer speakers headphones whatever way you want to listen audible has you covered so let audible help you discover new ways to laugh be inspired or be entertained new members can try it out for free for 30 days so just visit audible.com slash hoot or text hoot to 500 500 that's audible.com slash hoot or text hoot h-o-o-t to 500 500 to try audible for free for 30 days audible.com slash hoot we'd like to thank another sponsor of today's episode casetify you know mike there are certain things in my life that i like to drop i like to drop some beats whenever i'm having some friends over for a party i like dropping episodes for you guys our viewers our listeners but the one thing i hate to drop is my phone well you're in luck matt because casetify puts protection sustainability and style all together in their cases and they actually sent us quite a few cases uh, to try out, we have these custom ones that say hoot and a half on them. We'll show you a nice close up. Um, so, this is a fun one of a giant broccoli attacking a city and this little girl running away from it. And we have a few more in here. Caseify is truly the best case for your phone. Their Ultra Impact Crush cases are one of its most protective cases, engineered with innovative shock absorption patented technology. And these cases are up to 9.8 feet drop proof. So you can drop it from way up here, even taller than our good guest Young Gravy is. You could drop it from even taller than he is and you'll be good. Every detail is fine-tuned, optimal to 360 degree protection, and it has an ultra slim style. You barely even tell there's a case on there, truly. When you put a case to Fi case on your phone, it feels in your hand as if there's barely a case, but you do get the protection and the peace of mind knowing that your phone is protected. And they have their signature camera ring, which you see all over Instagram from mirror selfies. And it's designed to not just look good, but also to protect your precious camera lens. Not to mention their cases are super eco-friendly. Their crush cases are actually made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials. Interestingly, their crush cases are part of old phone cases that have been shredded and repurposed, which is reflected in its unique speckled look for the protection bumper. We stand 
sustainability. Absolutely. And we stand case to five. And if that is not enough, they have tons and tons of prints and designs you can choose from. And if you still can't find the one, you can always design your own customized phone case. The options are truly endless. It's perfect for yourself and perfect as a gift too. So who doesn't love a sweet personalized gift case defy has got you covered get your case defy case today and use our code one five hoot that's 15 h o o t on case defy.com c-a-s-e-t-i-f-y.com or order via the discount link in our description for the most protective cool looking and environmentally friendly case that the internet has to offer that's 15 percent off using code 15 hoot at casetify.com and now back to the episode it's awesome and it, it's awesome you uh sample rick astley's uh never going to give you up on it mm-hmm. um has rick astley like uh given you like a nod or been like dude i really l- I love that you've like revived the song yeah. in a way because it was kind of those ones where you know it's rick rolling you can't escape it but now it's like enjoyable yeah. like oh, it, I've, it, I've always thought the song was great and and the story is actually a little bit Interesting. So we were afraid when, when we made the song that we would have trouble clearing it. And there's and there's fair enough, because I've I've been denied on a lot of samples. George Michael, I sampled Careless Whisper at one point and I had to take it down. You that, do you sample pre asking for clearance? I used to. I used okay. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I was like signed and everything and I had like a legal team. Damn. Uh, DIY. But now, yeah, but now it's like you you finish a whole song and then you have to um like get it in front of these people and they might just say no. So, so I like, it's a whole, you know, time, time thing. And, and what I usually do is we'll, we'll just make a sample that sounds similar to something we like and just go with the, make our own, some original. So what we did with the Rick Astley song is we recreated never going to give you up almost exactly. So it's oh. not his voice, not his voice. It's our own instruments. It's our own everything. And my, my homie's singing on it. And it just sounds enough like it. Damn. That, we can get away with it. So, no, but we still had to clear the, it's confusing, we had to clear the publishing. So basically the people who wrote the original song have to cl- clear it and they can get a good percentage of, of the publishing, the publishing right. on but it. Because, not on the master. Because we because use, it's, a new yeah, recording. it's the same words and the same chord progression and everything. So basically that doesn't include, the, doesn't include Rick Astley because he didn't write it. He just sang it. So... He didn't even hear it, I don't think. He was busy on tour. I don't think he even heard it until it was already like out. So that that's a weird that's a weird sort of vibe where it's like, man, like because you hadn't linked up with him prior. Yeah, and I was like, I would have loved to have him on the song and have him be down, but I just like I was afraid that he wouldn't be down. Yeah, and would just deny it and it'd be a waste of time. So then like I didn't, and now the song blew up, and I'm like, I know he's seen it now. All I know is that someone got it in front of him, and he he said he's a fan of it. He's down with it. Oh, he's cool with yeah. it. But like, like, it's just a weird way to kind of come at you know. I'll be like, oh, here we recreated your song. Didn't ask you about it. And here now it's out. But I think he's cool with it. Uh, I'm and and apparently when he's back from tour, he might hit me up and we can. Yeah, yeah. y'all gotta come out together yeah. for like the MTV like music awards or something. Yeah, right? he's next year. I, I feel I'm, like there would. It's his one time where like now it's no longer a joke. Yeah, it's just he, like, he can be like a real. Yeah, he's that's on. A good, Good point. Yeah, and, and he's done cool shit like that before. I know he did a cover with like the Foo Fighters at some live show, and I'm, I feel like he'll be down. It's like, I, uh, but they told me he's like, oh, he's busy right now, and you'll you'll hear back. But I actually got a notification yesterday that that um, never gonna give you up just went five times platinum yesterday, and I was like, I wonder, a little something. To do I wonder if I helped boost. out a little bit. We could check yeah. the the Google search trends and see if there's yeah, a spike out there. Because people to... who probably don't know Betty are probably like telling their Alexas like Alexa, play uh that is never gonna yeah. give you up thing, and it's yeah. just like. Damn, uh, dude. Yeah. Well, damn. That's awesome. And uh, w- another thing I wanted to talk about in this song, there's a tiny sample um, that's actually a line that's pulled from Night of the Living Dead. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Now, was that intentional? Are you a big Night of the Living Dead fan? Or was no. that uh, something that. Uh, <laughs> you know, when I, I remember when I put that in there, I was like, oh, like I need to have like some crazy answer. Like if I, if I was on like a random radio show that I didn't care about, I'd probably tell y'all that I'd. I was directing a movie called Night of the Giving Head, but that, <laughs> that, that was my my sort of thought process. But no, I, I just found out that that movie would like had all these like you you could sample it f- for free. Like, oh, oh it's copyright free because it's, it's co- that old. Yeah, there's something about it, not not necessarily because I think there's some way that they can like renew that. 
Oh, there's, there's so many weird legal l- rules, but that one specifically is one where you can. And, really? And I that had, whole movie, every line you could just put into a song. And I, no I believe so. I, I don't want to. Don't quote me on that. But I found <laughs> it on Splice, which is like a, a website where you can buy little samples. I and, love Splice. And I'd worked with a guy. I actually did a, a voice acting thing for like a horror podcast, and the guy who wrote it is the same guy who 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 wrote Night of the Living Dead. He's still around, uh, the original. Um, and yeah, he was like 20 then, and now he's a lot older. But like me and him together, kind of like wrote this story, and I did this voice acting. I don't know if it's gonna drop when when it will, but I literally did like a horror voice acting thing, which you wouldn't expect from me, but I did. And uh, I was like, you know, I want to show, us, I want to like kind of. I got weird connections to Night of the Living Dead, and I, I I'm just gonna throw this in here, and I, it fit really well there. I wanted, I didn't want to like talk there myself. I've always had like these older samples in my music, and I used to do it before I had to clear everything. And then I finally found like some places where I can pull from. So I was like, this is like a nice little, you know, this, oh, is, this cool. is like where the yeah, yeah. where like the kid on Genius would go and find out <laughs> all the little facts, you know. Um, what does scare you though? Are you, are you scared of zombies? Are you scared of vampires, werewolves? Oh man, that's... apocalypse in general, dude. Hold on, let me think for a sec. Cause I know that I'm scared of like I'm not only really scared of zombies, I'm not only really scared of like spider. I'm scared of sharks. I'm scared of sharks. <sighs> I'm scared of the feeling after you get bitten by a shark. That state of shock. Yeah. Like you it's like just, swim. Your arm is just now off. And then you, <laughs> yeah, you're too scared to do anything about it. I'm scared of like big open areas of water and like being in like a place like, like, like alligators and sharks and like whales and shit like that scare me because like, that's not my element. I'm, yeah. I'm just swimming. I have to turf. be up and I have like a little area I can chill in. I can't go down there. I can't go anywhere. I'm slow. Like, yeah, that, that just scares me. Yeah. Spiders, snakes, I'm good with that. Zombies, all good. I'd, I'd, I'd survive a zombie apocalypse, I think, at least for a bit. You got the height advantage. The height advantage. I got, you know, I could work on my cardio a little bit if I knew it was coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been punched in the face? Yep. Can you tell that story? <laughs> Yeah, I've been punched in the face a number of times. Oh, uh, really? I used to fight people a lot. Yeah. Really? Oh, damn. Yeah. I feel like were, were you always as tall as you were? I was always. This... Yeah, I've always been tall, but I wasn't always like, like I don't know. I was skinnier back in the day. Um, but I mean, I would say most of the fighting happened like when I was either in college or like right, like right early rapper days. I just have this weird thing where like, I don't know, man. I would just like want to fucking beef with people. Like it wasn't like I was seeking out just a fight. It was like I would be somewhere and i find the person that's being an asshole and being a dick and then like kind of piss them off and get them to swing on me and then i would fight them because i knew that i could like throw pretty good hands i don't know i got over that i broke my hand one time got that reach yeah i mean i got reach and yeah dude i just like i don't know especially it was especially with frat kids in college i don't know why i didn't like frat kids but there was like these really fucking douchebags there was some really douchey ones and i would just like get them pissed off and then just go off and 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 uh but you broke your hand one time i broke my hand in crowd surfing in new zealand i was okay. crowd surfing in new zealand something hit me in the hand really hard and i broke it but like when i went to the hospital it was right here everyone thought that i had punched somebody because it's like a bone you only almost only ever break when you punch somebody but basically the what, what i learned is that if i break it again it could fuck my hand up forever and i wouldn't be able to write anymore or anything with my hand so i like i haven't fought anyone in, in years now I so just the boxing career yeah just yeah. just kisses only punches now yeah. <laughs> yeah kisses only uh but i guess a specific i think a good story about getting punched in the face i was at i was at a party i was at a, a sorority formal with my good friend i get in there uh we've been in the in the like the dance thing for like 10 minutes going to the bathroom this is kid acting up, being wild. Calls my friend a racial slur. I got pissed. I got in his face. Blah blah blah. He swings on me, and and I beat his ass. And all this, it was it was beautiful. It was really impressively <laughs> done. Um, there is a video out there somewhere um, of that. But anyways, then the, I remember this this punch to the face the most because then after that the fight got broken up, and I'm like we're we're like. I'm getting held back by all these dudes in suits, and he's getting held back by a bunch of dudes in suits. And he just, like, breaks free in the middle of the bathroom, and the dudes that are holding me don't let go. So I have my arms behind my back and just get punched in the face, like, oh. full force. This kid ran at me and just hit me so hard, and I was so mad, dude. Straight up sucker punch, man. Yeah, sucker punch while my hands are behind my back. And after like, the fight's already, like... After I already the beat bell his run. ass. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, I guess, you know, I, you know, he got something... 
Did the guys holding you back? They were like, we're sorry about that. Dude, <laughs> it was like, I was so mad, but I was just like, already as a guy, I already beat this dude's ass. Like, and long story short, I ended up going to jail. We both went to jail. For that fight? For that fight. Because, oh, wow. because like, I don't know, it was like a small town and it was, uh, they called it assault. And in the end, I got bailed out by my fans because I put up a story in the jail of the kid. Uh, like I filmed him and like, like I put you my put camera up Instagram around, story in the, on the young gravy Instagram story way back when I had like 30,000 followers, I put my camera around a little, like, I don't know. We were in the same little room, like both handcuffed. And I was like, Oh dude, what's up pussy? And like, dude, it, was, it, was, <laughs> it was really demeaning. And he started like freaking out and I posted it on my story. And then these kids figured out that I was in Nevada, Iowa, not Nevada is the city name, Nevada, Iowa. And they came and bailed me out. And they just pooled damn. their money together for you. Yeah, I mean, it was like it was like four hundred bucks. I think at that time it was a lower. It was just like a ruckus charge yeah, or something. Yeah. And then I ended up getting an assault charge, and then I got it dropped because I just got a good lawyer, and it was all good. And then everyone heard the actual story from people, so it worked out just fine. Did you pay the fans back? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I brought them to a couple shows. Oh, <laughs> so I, I, like I brought three them, shows for life. I brought them on stage at a few shows. I think I still have one of their numbers. Damn, yeah. Yeah. that's awesome. That's the way to do it. Yeah, and they're they're music. One of them's a musician. And I like played his song on a show. Yeah, we we got along really well after that. So take it way back. You worked at a startup accelerator called Generator, if my research mm-hmm. proves correct. Yep. Um, do you still keep in touch, or have you communicated with the boss that you were hiding your rap career from? That said, if you get hired full time. We're moving you to another state, and you were like, "Nah, fuck that. I'm going heads down on rap." That's a, exactly that's the exact story. I was gonna I was gonna maybe go open the the new office in Atlanta or Indianapolis. Those were the, the options. So that's probably where I would be. I mean, it's been a lot of years, so I would be you know doing something similar. But I'd probably be in Atlanta or Indianapolis doing a you know a venture capital type you know college kid job. But uh, I do keep in touch. I haven't in, in a little while, but I've kept in touch with two of them. Uh, it was my old like main supervisor and the, the founder, and they've connect- It's been cute, man. They've connected me with like, like, I did a little uh, like sort of seminar for this company that they were working with, that was like literally giving money to uh, Milwaukee artists to try to like help Milwaukee artists grow. So I gave a little sem- seminar to a bunch of different musicians in Milwaukee through one of those companies, which is really cool. And uh, another one of them linked me up with uh, like her boyfriend in Atlanta that set me up with some cool stuff. So yeah, we we kept in touch. I, I did a little a little. Uh, I helped out one of their little like jewelry companies with some promotion stuff. So you know, I, I worked with them for a while and I love doing it. And they like taught me a lot that I know. So like I'll do free stuff for them. Damn, oh, so nice. it's a good it's a good ending to the story of you mm-hmm. being like I'm I'm moving on with rap, but. Yeah, you know. they're fans, and and yeah, I'm sure that when they, I'm sure they still, you know, bump some gravy sometimes. <laughs> I hope so. We all are. What's the most expensive thing you own or you have bought, or what do you like to just spend your money on? The most expensive thing I bought is probably just my car, which is a Tesla. It's like a hundred grand, like a souped, oh, souped nice. up Tesla. Come so, a long way since that 03 Honda Civic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had a Chrysler 300 that I bought for six six bands at a, some sketchy store in in Englewood, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> And I drove that for a while, and then I had that in Minnesota, and then and then the Tesla here, uh, and then I I jumped it wrong and and killed all the like electricity on it, and like the blinkers wouldn't work, and I'd, I oh, gave, shit. I, I gave it to a fan. There's a fan who wanted who like collected cars, and I gave it to him, and he like he decked it out in like gravy, fan, like spray painted it with gravy stuff, and damn, and I signed it all over. It was really cute. That's sick. Yeah, like a super fan. Um, so that was cool. That's the that Chrysler's in like Denver now. But uh, but yeah. So the Tesla. There's not really anything that cool. I might buy a car soon or like a house or something. But I, I, I overall, I save my money aside from like food and drinks and that sort of thing. I love I love to take my friends out for like a big like. I love to just celebrate things and like go out to like. <laughs> yeah. I love fancy food. That's that's where I spend probably the most of my money. Experiences over mm-hmm. products. What's your Which, favorite restaurant in L.A.? Favorite restaurant in LA, um, dude. I haven't been to enough of like the really fancy ones. I really liked Beauty and Essex. I, I, I think a lot of people, maybe that's kind of like the go-to answer for some people. But it's like a they have one in New York too, the yep. original, yeah. And it's like the same outdoor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What kind of cuisine is it? So it's like American food, it's, right? It's like new. I think they call it New American, when it's just like crazy fancy things that the chef thought of. But it's really good. Like they had like you pay like fifteen bucks and they give you these little like it's like a ramen spoon, but it has like fancy um tomato uh yeah. soup and they have like a little uh grilled cheese 
like thing floating in there and like beauty and essex I think it's, I've it's good it it's the the logo is like it says beauty and essex in a script font and it's like a bunch of light bulbs inside of it it looks like an old like broadway sign what's the town is it i don't know it might be in i feel like it's like near the airport maybe no, here here it's 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 definitely in Hollywood or West Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I've been to the New York one too, which yeah. is like that's the first one I went to. I like that place a lot. Um, we should all go to get some fancy food. <laughs> Let's get some dinner. This is Let's making me dinner. hungry, man. Yeah. What's the? Uh, can you tell us about the the ice on your wrist? Oh, the ice on my wrist. I've had this for for quite a while. This is I got it at Icebox in Atlanta. I don't know if you've seen they they do these videos. It's a it's a just like a it's kind of a nice a, little rose gold like yeah. It's a casual Rolex with the with the the pink um, oyster uh, face, which is pretty rare. I, and I, I just got a Rolex. My girlfriend got me yeah. one. The girl got oh, me yeah. a Rolly. It's my first one I've ever had. It's a banger, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving. It. I'm still trying to like break in the damn band though. It's like so new. I and have stiff. an Apple Watch that I wear when I go on my walks. <laughs> hey, that's right. Come on. Would you one ever day. own a Rolex? One day. I, I feel like that's like I I want a Rolex that someone gives to me i feel like i don't want to be the guy that buys my own but because i'm not like cool enough i mean but you're like a cool guy like (laughs) i I did i did i did it on like a little little video it was a cute little moment behind it but yeah you're also like a you know famous rapper you kind of got you kind of got to buy some type of ice i'm just like a jewish guy from new jersey i can't be going out to the rolex store like being seen but you know you have the jewish guys from new jersey are you know probably own more rolexes than (laughs) you know i know some jewish guys from new New jersey and they probably a lot of them have more than me yeah are you familiar with inside the actor studio no all right it was like an older tv show and uh in the 90s in the 90s a lot of famous actors would go on to it talk about their craft um and they would do it in front of like a live audience but at the end of every episode they would ask uh the same 10 questions to each one of these actors um i know you're not much of an actor but I, well, you I, did the I, horror, I like the you horror podcast. Chops. Hey, yeah, I did a I did a voice acting podcast, and I've done some sketches, like comedy sketches with Trevor and like Churdleys. But hey, I mean, I won't I won't be surprised if you're going to be acting soon. Eventually, I'm, sca- I'm I scared got faith of it. In you. I'm scared of it, but, I, but I've gotten offers, and I think I just got to bite the bullet and just try it. Do it, hundred percent. Do it. Well, these aren't acting based; these are pretty broad. But uh, we just want to act them. Uh, we just want to ask them, Mike. You want to ask? So yeah, just ten questions that. These We're are just going to ask you. You can take as long as you want. Answer as short or long as you want. Okay. First question. What is your favorite word? I was about to blurt out coochie. I don't know. That was just on my was <laughs> It's on a my word. <laughs> I mean, not Merriam-Webster word, but I think it's a coochie. Coochie. It could. I wonder if it is on it. Probably not. Uh, I don't know. That, that just. It just. Not not just because like I'm like, oh, like I love pussy or whatever. And I'm like the rapper. But just it's a good. It, it sounds good. Yeah. It flows off the tongue. I made a song called the Coochie Anthem with Dylan Francis, and it it sounds really good. So it's yeah, good. it's like Celador. There's a melody to it. It's like Celador. Coochie. Coochie's now, a... my question for you, the second one, is what, what is your least favorite word? My least favorite word is probably giving. I mean, it's it's kind of, it's kind of not, not just in any sense of giving, because I love giving to people that I love, but when people say, oh, it's giving. Oh, like the internet slang. You know, and I've kind of, it's kind of funny. Like, I, I say it now, you know, like, hey, this it's giving water. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving water. Yeah. But, you know, some of those, there's a few other examples, like, oh, not me taking a sip of alcohol on <laughs> TV. It's run its course. Like, it's crazy when you hear people speak in internet language in real life. Like when you hear someone say, "Not me taking a sip of hind," like, like you're actually saying this out loud in front of other yeah. people. Like, just spice it, like, it up, switch it up, yeah. come up with something different. There's yeah. a lot of stuff out there. Make your own lingo. It's like no one's saying "lol." You know, I feel like the, our generation kind of learned not to say "lol" out loud. You know, in, in in person, but you know, they're they're doing it. There are people that will literally go "lol." Yeah, okay, yeah, that's that actually is really true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, what turns you on creatively, spiritually, emotionally, and the Young Gravy special, I will say, sexually? Is he, um, are these four separate? You can answer them or separately they're all or together. Just like okay. what, when I think like what, what turns on Young Gravy, okay. what comes to mind? I guess like I'm just thinking about it now as like, like qualities in like a woman or a person. Just like crazy weird people like not like crazy like just like someone who like they'll, they'll come to me and say something that makes me laugh where i'm like uh, why you, like you know if i think they're weirder than me or like funnier than me or like remind me of myself and like not a douchey way but like you know like turns me on when i can like you know send like like my alarm when i wake up in the morning is uh is a song from the 50s it's a it's a 
It's called personality. Do you, can you can you add it into the into the podcast yeah, after? Of course, yeah, 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 absolutely. I'll, I'll play play my my morning alarm. It's called personality by uh, the Pied Pipers. And like it's, some people would think it's pretty fucking weird when I wake up next to a girl and that song plays. But like, I had a girl start singing it the other day, and she said personality, and I was like, oh, what's like, oh. <laughs> you know, like if you know this obscure song from like 1955 or something, like that's that's lit. So like, you know, little <laughs> weird things like that. Absolutely. We what started time, dancing. What time do you set your alarm for in the morning? It's different every day. I'm trying to get onto like a. I really want to get onto like a actual schedule, but like, I think yesterday I woke up at. 7 30 today i woke up at like 12 just because i have i'm bad at falling asleep i have i have a little yeah. bit of sleeping problems but i try to catch catch some sleep you know have you tried magnesium magnesium i have i have magnesium glycinate though don't get yeah there's the one right... that's like helps you poop and there's one that helps you sleep get, okay. get the magnesium because right you'll one. be taking <laughs> magnesium <laughs> oxide and you're gonna be waking up in the middle of the night like you gotta go magnesium changed my life like okay. truly it's it's a great it's because a lot of times people will do like melatonin mm -hmm. which is like so, something your body naturally produces and i'm not a doctor but by taking melatonin you're telling your body not to produce it and then over time you actually get worse at yep. sleeping but magnesium is just like an element that your body needs as part of like nutrients and if you take it before you go to bed okay it helps you fall asleep and wake up at the right time i have this stuff called calm calm yes is that is they that may, that's like them? a brand of it and they might add some other like stuff to it if you can get like pure magnesium it might okay. be better but i'll send you cool uh, what i use cool. and it's, it's great all right no, next question is what sound or noise do you love sound or noise do i love um clarinet is my favorite sound Ooh. little squidward actually yeah. like yeah exactly like squilliam and i love the clarinet dude i i like it. there's certain instruments where producers will like that I work with a lot, they'll get sick of me always wanting to use them. But like clarinet and like certain types of strings, like a like a cello, dude, just like something about those. The gets me clarinet, off. the clarinet goes doodle 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 that. Is that Michael Bublé? No, that was I think it was from the Marvelous Musical Mansion. It was this movie our music teacher would put on. I like kids. that. Whatever you did, yeah, doodle, doodle 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 that. This kid yeah. sings musicals like it's not a. This isn't a musical. This isn't Broadway. This is something as a child that just stuck with me. Do you do you listen to Klezmer music? Cla it's like Jewish folk music, and it's the clarinet is the lead instrument. Really, and it's like really energetic. It's like your classic Jewish wedding music. Like, yeah. Dun, 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 and it's all clarinet. Okay, okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I need to, I need to find a good, a good, good. I performed at a, a bat mitzvah recently. Oh, really? I, yeah, my uh, first, my first one. And, damn. Ooh. And and I, my my DJ and I were thinking about trying to get like like remix one of my bigger songs and add like some instruments. And like we thought, you know, maybe some maybe people wouldn't love it. You know, it might be like a little bit like we're trying too hard to be mm -hmm. jewish so so we didn't but uh i found some good some real good jewish music damn that was sick dude bat mitzvah that was one of the, i mean it was a really really well off family really like well put together big deal like i but like that's probably the fanciest fanciest event i've ever been to it was it was crazy. <laughs> i've never been invited to one to a bat mitzvah not bat mitzvah not a bar mitzvah uh, nothing should have grown up in new jersey here yeah there's not quite as many in uh in many texas, of all or in texas or, min or minnesota have you been to a bar or about mitzvah before or that was your first time being at no one? i think i knew one kid growing up that had one i didn't get invited and i was uh, same same here didn't right, get well, invited he invited when, all the hot girls I didn't get the invite. When my kids have their bar and bat mitzvah, you will both be on Let's the list. Go. Hey. And you won't be working. You'll just be hanging. No, right, cool. no pressure right. to perform. Um, what sound or noise do you hate? There's this new dog <laughs> that my roommate got <laughs> that barks way too much. It's a husky. It's the cutest fucking dog Ooh, huskies, ever. Huskies, though, man. They'll hit some pitches. When it they, is like... so annoying. So there's this dog that barks all the time and bites me. But, like, you know, I don't want to hate because I think that she's going to become cooler and I want her to see this when she grows up. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, like, Kaya kind of pisses me off when she makes those noises. Um, I think just, like, there's that one alarm that a lot of people have. You know, that one alarm sound where it's, like, a, it's like a abrasive one. It's, like, the... Like the alarm sound, like eh, eh, yeah, it's eh, like one of the eh. ones. Yeah, there's one that's really common on like iPhones. That's just like some people choose it, and it's like the most. I don't know. Oh yeah, it's that's kind of like a boring answer, but I think that is. Well, aside it's from an the honest new... answer. Yeah. I was gonna ask you about your favorite song because that's like sort of a risk where if you set your like not your favorite song, but a song that you like as your alarm, do you feel like an anxiety rush or like a bunch of adrenaline when you hear it out in the world because it's like the thing you wake up to, or are you still in love with the song even though it's your alarm? It's weird. I've 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 had a number of different ones over the years. Well, I use a lot of times a, a you know a song will be, be my alarm for a year or two or longer. You know, without me changing it. I don't know how you guys do that, but but it's always a song, and, and I think most of those, 
I don't think I ever really got sick of them. I think all those songs I still listen to a lot. There was there was Ginseng Strip by Young Lean, which got, I know it blew up on TikTok recently. That was I, your alarm at that, 7.30 in the morning? That was my alarm like years and years ago because I was a huge fan of him on SoundCloud. And it starts with this like Japanese singing sample where it's like... Uh, and my girlfriend at the time would freak out every time, but I, just, <laughs> I loved it because it just got me hired for the day. Yeah, man, I've had a lot. I don't think I've ever gotten sick of them. And personality specifically, the one I currently have, that alarm, dude, I get stuck in my head in the morning. I'm happy all morning. I'm singing it. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's a good life. Uh, the next question is, what is your favorite curse word? Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> well. <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. I say shit a lot. Um, I maybe... I've tried to stop. I've tried to start saying "bitch" less. I think "bitch" was just a good. It, it just fit well, like not like like addressing women as bitches, but just using that word, like yeah, good, like yeah, bitch. Like that was one a, syllable. Has yeah, the B and the sh. And it, yeah, in music, I would use "bitch" a lot. Um, and I've turned that turned that down a little bit. I like shit. I like calling people cowards. You know? Cowards. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, that's a powerful word. Yeah, you know? and like when you dress them as cowards, they're not forgetting that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, okay, next question is, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Man, I, I think it'd be really cool to either be, like, a chef or, like, a movie director. But both of them, I would want to make sure I'm, like, sick at it before I even try. Kind of like with rap. Like, I would want to, like, I would go into hiding and learn shadow. everything about it. Yeah. Yeah. Lurk off into the shadows, not release music for four years, and then come back. Open a restaurant where we air movies. Have you been watching The Bear? The Bear on Hulu. Uh uh-uh. uh It's really good. What Did you it? watch Shameless at all? I haven't. Well, I don't. I haven't watched that many. It's TV that main shows. kid from Shameless. It takes place like in Chicago. Of this kid opening up like a beef sandwich like shop, and he's been trained under like the best chef in the world or whatever. It's pretty good. It's like it's a outside. restaurant show. Yeah, it's, it's could outside. be up your alley if you're into like directing and food. Yeah, that's okay. pretty damn good. Okay, I, I, used to, I used to own a restaurant in New York City, so if you ever decide to get into the biz, I can I really? get some pointers. The yeah. burlap sack, <laughs> right? You owned a restaurant? You, you liked it? Uh, it was really cool, but when you own a restaurant, it's like the, I mean, for your first one, it's the only thing you can do. Like, that, you that have makes to be sense. there all the time. Yeah. There's always some shit to do. There's always someone trying to, like, pull a fast one on you. There's always a problem you got to solve. Yeah. So you got to be there. Like, and I was like, well, I guess you're 26 now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like your age when when I opened it, so it was just like it was cool at the time to like, you know, hang out with somebody, be like, hey, you want to come to my restaurant after drinks? And it's like you just open yeah. the door to a restaurant after hours, but um, it's a lot of work and definitely really time intensive. So if you're gonna do it, you know, just prepare yeah. for that. But. I think I think more realistically for me, like when I'm done making music, I think I I think I'd be really good at something sort of in like the like bar or like liquor rum like like I've, I've actually talked to a number of people or and companies about like dropping some sort of drink I, in college my friend and i had the idea of doing like uh we had this idea of let's market let's market this towards women and let's make sort of like a seagram's that's a little bit more sweet that doesn't have any calories and it has liquor in it and then we didn't have any money to do it and then two years later white claw Clock. drops oh, and i'm yeah. like fuck man that's- i was like Dude, like, yeah. So like, I've had, a, and there's been a number of other ideas. I mean, I know that they dropped like the coffee liquor drinks at one point that didn't really pop off, but that was another thought that we had. I think doing something like that, or maybe opening a bar, but not like, not like doing all of the work for. It. Like, I'd hire somebody to do a lot of. I that. thought yeah. about that with uh, with when seltzers and like white claws were popping off. I'm like, they need to make like a masculine looking one because like a lot of them were just really feminine looking. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, they made Happy Dad. Yeah. And that's exactly what I was talking about. Oh, that's I didn't think about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After that, for me, I thought it was a beer. Yeah, it's a seltzer, isn't it? It is a seltzer. Still mm-hmm. got that startup accelerator brain working. Yeah. Hey, yeah. sharks. <laughs> yeah, I'm big uh, on okay, that. and then uh, my next just, question I would is: just jump to the last one. Here. Okay, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? What's popping, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Some, some cool, some no, awesome. That's a great response. Something that one of my homies would address me as, you know, something that I would hear from a friend rather than like a really official. Like I don't want to have to start talking like a different person now that I'm in Jesus <laughs> land, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um. So you got you're about to go on a whole nother leg of the tour, right? Or you're about to leave town. I'm leaving town just for like some press stuff in New York, and um, I got a few college shows this month and next month. Every like every like September, October, and like March, April, I do a lot of college stuff, 
And then, but I'm, but I'm not really doing like a full, I'll be back and forth, but doing a full, I'm going to be doing a full tour with Baby No Money in uh, November, December. Because Baby No Money is like your producer and you he, guys do a shoot. Ra- rapper that I work with a lot. There's a few songs I'm sure you guys recognize. And you're doing two projects right now. You have like your album, which is basically done. And then mm-hmm. you have, was it? Gravy uh, Baby 3? Or? Ba- Baby Gravy 3. Baby which, Gravy 3. Which is, so Baby No Money and I, he's this rapper. We've done a lot of songs together, like some of my biggest ones, like Whip a Tesla and Welcome to Chili's. He, his biggest song that you guys have probably heard, he's like, did I really just forget that melody? When I popped off, da na 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. It's almost ha- it almost has like a billion streams on, on Spotify. It's huge. Uh, that's, that's one of my best friends. We've been working together for six years. So we're doing a tour, like a co-headline tour in October and November. Hell no, yeah. November, December. Yeah. That's exciting. Hopefully we'll catch you on one of those dates. Do you like Lestra? Lestra. Is he the CEO at business.net? Oh, it's Lentra. Oh, is it Lentra? Lentra. My bad shit. Lentra, oh, well, I know okay. him as CEO at yep. business.net. But uh, for those beats, but then he goes by this other like title. Yeah. I don't listen to those a lot, but like, okay, I feel so, like. So yeah. Lentra and Baby No Money are like. Are like I think they're born on the same day. They like grew up together, and like he produces a ton of Baby No Money stuff. And when we work together, Lunch has produced a few songs for me that we've done together. Damn. And and like yeah, so I know that dude well. Oh, we love that song, Buttercup. Oh yeah, Buttercup. yeah, fuck yeah. There's stuff. So so it's like him and their other boy, Jungle Bobby, and and Baby No Money. All three of them like do a ton of stuff together. They all live in Vancouver. They live together. They're like, like, yeah. Ah, oh, shit. I didn't know. Yeah, y'all had all these connections. I just like, I don't know. Ever since like listening to you, he always comes in my head, and I'm just like, yeah. I'm sure there's like, yeah. a lot of yeah shared a lot little... of some stuff in the same vein. Mm-hmm. Well, awesome, man. Is there anything else you want to plug, shout out, give a? <sighs> you guys kind of covered it. Um, yeah, man. My my album is gonna be dropping in September. And Do you have uh, an official date? I don't have an official date, but okay. I know it's gonna be. You know, that's that month. I already told him. I'm like, don't. We can't change it. Don't you dare. Told my label that, so it's gonna be in September. I don't know the exact date. How are you like, gonna celebrate? Are you gonna have like a release party or anything? I should, I should. I didn't even think about that yet, but I should. I'm really excited for it. It's my favorite album I've made so far. We're finishing up the vinyl designs and stuff right now. It'll be Ooh, sick. Vinyl yeah. designs, yeah. man. It's, it's sick, man. Do you go to like vinyl factories and they already got it like a fake one printed out and you just nah, like? It's like it's mostly all like remote. Like I've, I've done it for a, a few past ones and like just my art guy and I get together and like get, go off on it. Oh, I had another question. Where were you the first time you ever heard your music, but you weren't playing it? Like, have you ever been in a, a store and like you heard it playing? It was at a stoplight, and it was it was it was a, a a while back. It was a while back before I'd shown my face anywhere, and they were playing one of my like more obscure songs loud in like a nice car, and I was in my shitty little Honda, and I was like, I tried to like I think that like. I noticed right at the last minute I didn't have any chance to like yell and be like, yeah, that's me. But like it was in Madison, Wisconsin. Wow. Yeah. That was crazy. That that's was gonna like, be a wild moment. Way early. And I was like, bro, like the chances are so low that they have me playing that song and at that time because I was mad, mad low key. But now, um, I don't know. There's been a lot of really cool ones, like like when they play it at like sports stadiums and stuff like that, that gets me hyped. Shit. That's um, gonna be a cool feeling. Yeah, that sort of thing. Well, thanks for coming on Hoot and a Half. It was an honor to have you here. Matt, it was Dope. so great. We got to hang out more. So. You should come to the Zilla thing. Okay. Well, let's not give away too much. Oh, details, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it will yeah. be over by the time this comes up. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, All right, yeah. cool. Well, we're hanging okay. this weekend. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Be sure to check out Matt, a.k.a. Young Gravy, everywhere and anywhere he is on the internet. Listen to his jams. He's the best. Matt, thank you so much for coming on, man. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. See you next. Take care, you. guys. Bye. Bye.